Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany, welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss things relevant to social issues and media. Today's topic is just obnoxious rich people closets. I recently started watching the show Bling Empire on Netflix, which is apparently about the real crazy rich Asians of LA. I also recently watched Get Organized with the Home Edit, which is basically these professional organizers who often work with celebrity clients. So those gave me the inspiration for this topic, and then after that I started watching celebrity closet tour videos on YouTube, especially Hot Limode's reaction videos. Someone like Luke understands fashion, designers, luxury brands. I am the opposite. I know nothing. So for me, it's kind of just fun to hate watch. Like, it's fascinating, but it's also sickening. So this topic's kind of related to my flex culture video and you're not relatable anymore. In this video, I'm basically going to go through a lot of these massive closet tour videos, talk about the typical elements, discuss consumerism, materialism, all that jazz. Before I start, got to address the elephant in the room, which is the immense environmental impact of this type of content and behavior. Overconsumption is bad. If you're on my channel, you probably agree. I'm so glad to see a lot of conversations being had about the environmental impacts of our consumer choices and our lifestyles, but this video is not going to focus too much on that specifically, just because I think it's pretty obvious. Throughout this video, I'm going to show a lot of examples of these massive closets, and it's a lot. It's extreme. It's waste. It is wild that a single person could own so much stuff. As I criticize these habits, I hope it's clear that I'm not trying to shame the average person. 99.9% .9 of people are nowhere near this level. It's like the difference between someone flying economy a few times a year versus the ultra rich flying on private jets every other day just to get dinner across the world or something. Obviously consumption can be measured objectively in amounts of different resources, but people tend to view their consumption in comparison to the people around them. So the consumption that's considered average in a wealthy country is going to be a lot higher than what's considered average in a poorer country. Though yes, I think regardless of who you are, it is extremely wasteful, unnecessary, and harmful to, for example, buy a bunch of new clothes that you never wear or only wear once. I am not a minimalist. I don't think it's bad to enjoy shopping or to enjoy some stuff but I am pro-mindful consumption. Those of us with the privilege of choice, time, and money should be more mindful consumers, though I do not expect perfection from anyone because we live in a capitalist society that ultimately prioritizes profit over anything else. Therefore, Therefore there, there is no ethical, ethical consumption under capitalism. capitalism. But let's do our best. One thing I like to do is have secondhand shopping be my first choice, and I know that thrifting isn't equally available or accessible for everyone based on your clothing size or your location, among other factors, but I do hope it's something that you can look into. And that brings us to today's sponsor, ThreadUp. So I recently did a clean out of my entire wardrobe and I found that I was hanging onto a lot of clothes that weren't my size or my style anymore. So I needed some fresh pieces and I typically have a wish list that I keep for months and just let myself consider whether I really need that item before I buy it. So finally, I did some shopping on ThreadUp, which is an online thrift store with a huge selection and new arrivals every single day. You can search for your favorite brands, filter by size or price and find great items for up to 90% off estimated retail. I'll have a special promo to share with you in just a minute. This time I did my general search for a few items and then I was checking out their Revive by Rent the Runway section, which is really cool because it's already curated. It's stuff that was just recently rented and now it's being retired to be sold. So that made it even easier for me to find some really great brands and items in wonderful condition. So let me show you some of the stuff I got. First, we have this lioness skirt, $69 estimated retail price. I got it on ThreadUp for $13.65. I think this pair is great with this green coat. It is very cute. I am feeling this look. Some little tights and a turtleneck. So this outfit is a very casual one, but let's be honest, I only go to the grocery store these days. And I got this new green crossbody purse from Joy Susan. It's vegan leather, $60 estimated retail, and I got it on ThreadUp for $16.25. And then underneath I am wearing a Madewell shirt. What color is this? It has this little tie in the front, just a nice casual everyday top. Estimated retail price $40. I got it on ThreadUp for $13.65. And these jeans are from BDG, which is one of my favorite brands. Estimated retail price is $69. I got them for $18.70. What a smashing deal. And lastly, we have this wonderful sweater, which I'm always looking for more turtlenecks, mock necks. I like a funk 
funky sweater. The color blocking of this, everything called my name. I actually wasn't familiar with this brand, but this is a Proenza Schooler sweater. I wore it a few videos ago and a lot of you were asking where it's from, so there you go, but it's from ThreadUp, so I got a great deal. The estimated retail price is $495. Wow! And I got it on ThreadUp for $64.35. I love the crop, I love the shape, so I'm very happy with it. If you want to try ThreadUp, you can use my link and code Tiffany for an extra 30% off your first order. Now let's get into the mega closet content. I'm gonna highlight specific examples in a second, but this is the type of content that I am talking about. First question, why do people watch this? Most obviously, it's aspirational. Most people would love to have a decent sized closet, maybe even a walk-in, but most of us cannot dream of having an entire room dedicated to our clothing. And of course, it's materialistic goals. Many people have that one thing that they would love to buy if they could afford it, whether it is that one bag or that one pair of shoes or a Rolex or a Tesla getting expensive there. So in these videos, you can live vicariously through these rich people and imagine what it might be like to be able to buy anything you want. And also we're nosy and we just like to see inside other people's homes, how do they live? What do they own? It's our inside look into the private life of a celebrity. And don't forget the organization inspo. We all love some good organizational content. It is just satisfying to watch. It's so relaxing. I noticed this, what I call fully stocked and organized aesthetic. Everything has an exact place and it fits perfectly. This content has become really popular on YouTube, on TikTok, organized refrigerators, organized pantries. I got caught up watching these videos while writing this and I'm kind of tempted to do a whole video on just that. Fascinating. Okay, so finally let's get into the obnoxious, more than you could ever wear amount of stuff in these closets. <laughs> So as I'm watching these closet tour videos, I'm just wondering how many of these things are brand new with tags, never been worn, or maybe worn once to like one event, and that's it. And then they just live in a closet forever. Look how many pairs of jeans J.Lo has. I could not believe this. All the comments were like, this looks like a store. How could there even be enough differences, distinctions between those so many pairs of blue jeans even? I really can't get over it. In one of Hot Limode's comment sections, I saw someone make the point about the difference between loving fashion and loving shopping. I love clothes. I love insane clothes. I just love fashion, so. Do you want a piece because you love it or perhaps because it's popular and it's a symbol of wealth and success? And this sounds kind of elitist, which is not the intent. You definitely do not have to be a fashion historian or an expert to be able to appreciate clothing. And also loving fashion and loving shopping are not mutually exclusive. You can do both. But I think the point is money does not buy taste. Not that I think I have taste. I mean, I just love turtlenecks. But actually, honestly, even just the concept of taste is pretty elitist. I guess my point is just some rich people buy really ugly stuff and they think it's great because it's really expensive. And I think that's funny, but also everything's an opinion. Like imagine if you were given like $500 to build your dream outfit, you could be creative, you could shop at as many different places as you could, be thrifty, be whatever, versus spending like 20 grand on a juicy sweatsuit. Juicy? Did I just say juicy? I meant Gucci, but honestly, a juicy one too. That might be iconic. Continuing on, we have accessories. This is one of the first Hot Limode reaction videos that I watched recently, and I literally could not believe how many sunglasses Jaclyn Hill has. I was like, I truly, I can barely find one pair of sunglasses that even looks good on my face. How can you own this many? When are you going to wear them all? That's too many, too many. The collection element. Well, you have to remember this is 62 years of collecting. So it's not like this just happened all at once. The sheer volume of stuff, the excess, it's a status symbol, but it's also a comfort, you know, surrounding yourself with all these pretty expensive, luxurious things. You're a curator. Now you get to show off your taste. I'm personally not much of a collector type person and that's why this also fascinates me because I'm just not personally into collecting like clothing, makeup, products. But I know that for a lot of people, this is aspirational. You would love to have a massive collection of clothing and bags or shoes. That would be your dream. For me, I guess, if I had to name one thing I wanna collect, probably books. 
sounds very not like other girls of me. I'm like, yeah, enjoy your makeup and clothes. I like books. Like, okay. But anyway, that is to say that I understand that it is nice to have a physical collection of something that brings you joy. I get it. People collect things. Coins, postcards. And this is my unicorn. I collect a lot of these. I love Barbie and I've been collecting them since I was a little girl. And I actually collect tiaras. I have like over a hundred of them. But they're in the tiara closet. Let's look at the shoe collections. What is your favorite pair of shoes on this floor? Come on, you gotta pick one. No, you can't. That's Why? Not, that's not like asking you to pick your favorite child. So I would say this is actually a decent collection. It's not, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Jamie owns over 300 pairs of shoes with an average cost of $1,500 per pair. What do you even do with 300 pairs of shoes? Okay, 300 times 1,500, I should be able to do this math in my head, but I'm an adult, therefore I, I don't do math anymore. That's $450,000 worth of shoes. Estimated. Estimated. Mm -mm. Unfathomable. Half a million dollars on shoes. Mm -mm. Doesn't exist. Half a million dollars period does not exist to me. I'm a shoe fanatic. Oh, you think I have enough of them? All right, here's the only shoes that matter. When I was pregnant, that's all I could wear. I don't know, I can't even believe these are my shoes, whatever. Absolutely love Mariah Carey just being like, slides, those are the only shoes. Out of all this. Louboutins, they're a little pricey, but I mean, you can wear it all the time to the grocery, why not? And then of course, probably the best collection of all, the bag collection. Now this is flex culture at its finest. An Hermes bag can cost between $8,000 and $300,000 and Jamie owns over 200 of them. These are useless. <laughs> you can't put anything in them. This tiny expensive bag is so useless, ha ha ha. At least the Jenners give their tiny expensive purses to children. <laughs> this one I'm definitely gonna let Stormy wear probably. My mom gave these to me and Kendall when we were like super babies. This is like in all our baby photos, me and Kendall, like we're always holding these. And it wouldn't be a massive closet tour video without mentioning that your luxury bags are an investment. I have been collecting these bags for a minute. They're also a great investment. Kylie's cheeky little wink. Okay, we get it, you're a billionaire. I don't want to hear multi-millionaires or billionaires talk about how their expensive bags are an investment. It's like, great, lucky, you buy expensive bags and you can resell them and they're going to be worth more in the future. I don't know why I'm like, we already know you have money. Okay, cool. Another investment. Congrats. Whatever. <laughs> so I was going through all this footage and I noticed a pattern. If my house is on fire, I would say if there's a fire. In the event of a fire. Definitely my Himalayan. I would grab my diamond bag. I would take this one. This is the Himalayan Crocodile Birkin with white gold detailing and 245 diamonds. It is one of the most expensive Birkin bags in the world. So these bags are valued at anywhere between three dollars to $400,000 usually. And it appears to be the ultimate rich person status symbol. If you don't have the Himalayan Birkin, I don't want to see your closet tour. Most people in America can never even save up enough money for a down payment on a house, and that purse is literally worth more than the average house in this country. All I'm saying is schmeet the schmitch, you know? There's never enough space. For most people, the amount of stuff they have is limited by the space of their home. Most people don't have the room to keep everything that they've ever bought, so you have to declutter. You gotta have your garage sales, your yard sards. That's my favorite. And also average people probably don't have enough stuff that is so nice or in such good condition that it's worth keeping forever. We have sentimental items like that t-shirt from that team you were on in middle school, your wedding or prom dress or tuxedo, grandma's ring. But with limited space, you have to be picky about what you keep. Unless you want to pay for a bunch of storage facilities. It's not worth it. So I recently moved to a smaller one bedroom, which is interesting because I was planning on trying to upgrade. I wanted us to be in a two bedroom so I could have an office. I mean, I have my corner, so I'm good. But I'm actually glad that we didn't upgrade because we literally would have had to just buy a lot more furniture just to fill the extra space. And this place is smaller, so we had to downsize a little bit and we have to be very intentional about every single thing we have and be meticulous about how it's stored and organized. But I like it because it keeps me on my toes 
and it keeps me from buying too much stuff. The more space you have, the more you will buy to fill it. When you buy a McMansion with a ton of extra rooms, you're gonna be bye-bye buying. <laughs> Did not have to say that. You've gotta decorate, you've gotta fill space. And then, ooh, you've got extra closets, extra storage. You got that two or three car garage. Keep everything just because you can. These rich people have the space and they must display their goods. If you own so much beautiful stuff, you have to display it. You can't just store it. You have to put it on display like the beautiful pieces of sparkly, shiny, expensive art that it is. I want my clothes framed up. That's why we have this little window. Jamie uses a filing cabinet system to maximize the space in her closet. She has 10 different doors filled with hundreds of jackets, gowns, and furs. So as you can see, I had my scarves, my Hermes scarves framed. Most of them are actually gifts from like my birthday or Christmas. And since I don't really use them, I decided to put them on my walls. And many of these celebrities mentioned that they wanted their closet to feel more like a store, a retail environment, luxury. The standard is a room with, you know, built-in storage all the way around and a nice little island in the center where you can put all your accessories, your 500 sunglasses, Jaclyn Hill, drawers full of other things. But that's basic, to be honest. That's not gonna impress me, <laughs> not anymore. Some of these people have literally built an extra wing onto their house designed to fit all their clothes and more. Oh, having a separate room for your closet? That's a flex. But what about having a closet larger than the average size of an American home? They built this closet and it's about 2,000 square feet. I wanted to give it a, a, a retail feel. Von Miller's closet is 2,000 square feet. When I built it, I kind of like had that in mind. Like I wanted it to be big, but making it big, it just really, it really spaced out the focus. Whenever I'm going to wear something, I always wear the same stuff <laughs> over and over because it's, it's so spread out. Like It is admittedly so big that he doesn't feel like looking around it most days, so he just sticks to the same section and wears the same stuff every day. Cool, 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 cool. Kris Jenner said the same thing. She has her little go-to area. So basically, they're building this massive storage space. Most of the clothing and stuff goes untouched, and then they have a smaller section, which is about the size of the average person's actual closet, and that's their everyday go-to stuff that they actually wear. Same. But these closets are not just closets, obviously. Aside from the storage and displays. So I said, why not build a closet big enough to actually hold the charity events in the closet now? In the closet? In the closet. How big is this closet? 3,000 square feet, three floors, the closet's three floors? Yeah. So you have a bar in your so closet. A champagne bar. In your closet. Just in these few videos, we have a dedicated photo area for outfit of the day pictures. We have a shampoo sink for when you get your hair done professionally at home. A fitting room kind of space for clothing alterations. And of course, you've got to have your glam section. It's the other side of my closet. This is actually where I do glam and everything too. It's not just a closet. It's a huge room that we converted when I get ready for events and stuff like that. And you've got to have like a hangout lounge area for your friends when they come over and you guys all get ready and they borrow your clothing because your closet's literally a store. But still, there's too much stuff. Even with these massive closets built to fit all of their clothing, they're inevitably always getting more stuff, which means they are running out of room. Although it's still not enough for me, <laughs> I think I need more closet space. I've run out of hanger space. I bought so much. I think I got like 600 hangers and it's all out. By the way, I asked you guys on my Instagram, you know, what you thought about this topic and someone reminded me of the point that the richer you are, the less stuff you have to buy for yourself because you're constantly getting gifts, free stuff from all over the place, PR. And they surprised me and they gave me all these glasses and I was so excited. I was like jumping up and down like a kid. When you get something new, it's like the fun thing. Like every time I get like a new foundation and it's like expensive and I feel like so like bougie about it, like I have to keep it in its packaging for a couple of weeks because I feel like, oh, it's so amazing. This pink one is a gift from Floyd Mayweather. And he told me every, every time somebody asks to make sure they know, it's a gift from Floyd. So it's from the champ. Kris Jenner got gifted this bag at the end of her video tour. Oh my <laughs> God. I, <laughs> Yolo. Yolo. <laughs> I love this. I kind of laughed at that because I feel like it was a combination of an awkward, like unwanted gift reaction where you're like, oh, thanks, I love it. Throw it in the trash. Just kidding, put it on display with my other bags. Put it behind something. 
This creator has such a large collection of scarves because people just keep gifting them to her. Every time it's my birthday and Christmas, they just keep giving me so thank you so much. <laughs> you guys, overwhelmed ako, ko na kaya. I always think that about like super rich people. I'd be very stressed trying to get them a gift. And I'd also be like, honestly, hey, you're a billionaire. You have everything you want. I'm not buying you anything. There's no point. It's not good for me. It's not good for you. I'm going to design a little photo card of us like at, at CVS and get it printed in the photo section. I know you're above the material things. We, we only care about friendship, right? My presence is your present. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not friends with any billionaires, so. Anyway, with all this stuff, whether it's free, gifts, you're buying it, whatever, decluttering and reorganizing would literally be a full-time job. Hey, you're the manager of this 2,000 square foot closet. It needs to be color coordinated. If I have too much stuff, I just get stressed because I'm like, oh my God, it's gonna be such a pain to organize this. Or when we move, it's gonna be a nightmare. But rich people will always be able to hire other people to deal with that. So it's literally not a problem because they can just outsource that labor. But still, I would just feel so overwhelmed. I'd feel like I'm just getting buried in an avalanche of stuff. Another thing some people said to me on Instagram was asking about the tendency to show off or brag about your wealth or your material items based on whether you grew up poor or if you were born rich. There tends to be the idea that quote unquote old money people, people who come from generational wealth are more low key, they're more subtle, they don't show off because they find that tacky, and that new money people who have recently become wealthy are the ones who tend to show off and be obnoxious and spend too much. But I don't think that's true across the board, or at least I think it depends on the sector, the industry that you're in. Obviously, if you're in show business, entertainment, social media, I don't think that standard is there. I think that it's kind of a free for all. Within flex culture, especially, people are granted the permission to flex shamelessly. Even those who were born rich, like the Jenner's Kardashians, for example. Some people might think it's tacky, but oh well, because some people literally get famous just from being rich and just from flexing because, again, people are intrigued by it. People want to follow it or see it for, you know, love or hate. It gets you attention. I'm about to reference Jeffree Star, so I apologize. I know nobody wants to see that face or hear that name, but I had to include his vault tour. But even when I was broke, you guys, I would buy a purse that cost probably my whole month's rent, and then I would hustle to pay my rent just to have nice things. I've always been obsessed with designer. I was always told, Jeffrey, you'll, you'll never have a Birkin, you'll never be successful, and for some reason, certain things stick with you. So, we're gonna go on a little journey of this crazy wall, okay? And I think it's interesting that he vocalized the fact that he specifically always yearned for these material things as proof of success and also that he wanted to spite people and show off that, yes, I made it. Yes, I got the Birkins. Like, okay. He's obviously been a big example of talking about how he grew up poor. He grew up, he came from nothing, and now look at him being rich and flexing. I don't want to talk about him anymore. Also, though, can we touch on the whole elitism, obviously, of old money? Like, you or your family should be more respectable because your money came from generational wealth, which obviously came from long-term exploitation and probably a great deal of avoiding taxes. Like, cool. Is that better than someone who just got rich from exploiting people and, and probably avoiding taxes in the short term? It's like, no, it's not any more impressive. Well, my great-great-grandfather worked in the oil industry and now for generations we are set and that makes us better. Obviously, I'm not good at cosplaying um, old money. I need a monocle. Another interesting thing, some people asked about the disclaimers involved with these videos, and if you think back to, you know, the early beauty guru era, where room tours and house tours were like a new thing among teenage girls, there was always a ton of disclaimers right in the beginning, like, hey guys, I'm not bragging, like this was really highly requested, my family's comfortable, we're not rich, it's like you're showing us your mansion. Okay. But in these videos, I don't think I found any disclaimers. I think that super rich people, especially mainstream celebrities, don't feel any obligation to apologize for their wealth. But maybe I think rich YouTubers do feel like they sort of need to downplay it to their audience. I also found it interesting how the viewers perceived these videos, so I just looked at the comment sections quickly on these, and on some of them they got comments like, oh, she's so humble she got that on sale or like she wears that item a lot. 
It's like, oh, is that all it takes to be humble? <laughs> or like, wow, that's relatable. She said she lives in sweats. Me too. I just find it hilarious that this concept relies on someone being very materialistic, very wealthy. These videos are quite literally made to show off what you have, and yet some people could still perceive it as humble or relatable. In conclusion, aside from the surface level criticisms of extreme consumption, are there perhaps more serious issues underneath these habits? I of course don't want to diagnose anyone with anything, ever, and the people that I've featured in this video are just examples because their videos were relevant to what I wanted to address. But I do wonder how many celebrities or rich people either have shopping addictions or perhaps some hoarder tendencies. Is this someone who just loves to shop or is this someone who's actually struggling with compulsive shopping that's beyond their control? And in terms of hoarding, people often joke, maybe not as much now, but it used to be a common thing like, oh, I'm a hoarder, I just keep everything. If you wanna watch some interesting videos about hoarding, Kim from For Harriet and also T from Nappy Headed Jehovah both recently discussed hoarding. Really interesting discussions about how growing up in poverty or you know trauma can translate into issues like hoarding or hoarder tendencies. Highly recommend these videos. I don't know much about hoarding in like a clinical sense, but I do know there's a big difference between hoarding and intentionally collecting things. I think it's interesting, and obviously these closet tour videos don't show the full scope of everything. We don't know what goes on in anyone's homes, especially beyond what they're willing to put on camera. And again, I don't wanna even guess or assume that any of the people I featured do have hoarder tendencies or shopping addiction, but it's just a question because when it comes to collecting so many items and feeling so connected to all of those materials, it's just something that I would consider. And lastly, going back to that point about, you know, if you grow up poor and then you come into a lot of money, become very wealthy, does that make you more likely to cling on to material items because you grew up and you didn't have much or you didn't have anything? Does that make these things so much more powerful and comforting to you because you feel like they could go away at any time? Slightly rhetorical questions, but I would love to hear what you guys thought about this video. It is getting late. I feel bad for my neighbors because I'm filming. I've got to stop filming videos this late. Anyway, that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, if you want to check out ThreadUp, use the link in the description. Use my code Tiffany to get an extra 30% off your first order. If you want to see more of me, you can check out my second channel, vlog channel. I post other stuff there, including that closet clean out video. I've got to post part two soon. Also, I have a podcast called Previously Gifted. Listen on podcast apps or watch it on YouTube. And stay tuned for a future internet analysis video. Okay, thanks. Bye.